God, we thank you for this time that we've already had together, for your presence here. It's so faithful, so tangible. You know, Lord, that apart from the work of your Spirit, these will just be words. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. Spirit of Revelation, just touch each one here, those who are joining us online. We pray, Lord, that this word, these words will accomplish the purpose for which you have sent them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so the second name of God that we are looking at is Yahweh Rophi. And the passage in scripture that we are going to look at is Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 to 27. So if you can open that in your Bible. Exodus 15, 22 to 27. If you need a Bible, just raise your hand and the will give. Okay, so I'm reading from 22. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Uh, okay, to begin just a uh, context to this passage, uh, God's people, the people of Israel have just been uh, delivered from slavery. They have experienced the power of God in the most awesome, wonderful way, uh, like the plagues that destroyed or such havoc in Egypt. And they have just witnessed the mighty hand of God part the Red Sea, bring them across, uh, defeat their enemies. And uh, this incident is just after that, they are in the desert. And as we just read, they are without water in the desert for three days. And when they do find water, it's bitter. And we also see here that uh, this is an experience that is testing them. They're being tested through this uh, bitter experience. And the situation that they are in, their need, their disappointment, their frustration, as you see in verse 24, causes them to grumble against Moses and they grumble and they say, what are we supposed to do? Now the water that they find is not how it is meant to be. Okay? It's not fit to drink. It says that something has spoiled the water. The water is bitter. And so the people's response is to grumble and complain. They complain against Moses. And you see Moses' response. He prays. He cries out to God. And uh, the Lord shows Moses a piece of wood which he throws into the water and the water becomes sweet. Okay. Now, um, the power to bring sweetness or to restore that water is not in the wood because um, these people go on to drink that water and we know that the numbers that we are looking at is 6 lakh plus people. So the water that they get to drink, we're not talking about like a cup or a bucket or a basin of water that Moses could have thrown in some medicinal herb or some wood with property, with uh, like some medicinal property and the water gets transformed. We're talking about a lot of water. And so um, the power to uh, transform or to restore that water is not in that piece of wood, but in the Lord and what he was doing there. The people are basically seeing God at work. There's a sign, there's a miracle happening over here. 
and then uh, I guess the most important part of that passage is that in through this incident and in this incident God goes on to speak to his people and he reveals himself to them in a very significant way he reveals himself as Yahweh Rofe the Lord who heals and it is not just something specific to that incident or the past where he's saying that you know I've healed you but if you look at that passage he says I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians for I am the Lord who heals you this is uh, talking of an ongoing promise it's a promise for God's people for the future that I am the Lord who will or who heals you in this particular incident he uh, used a piece of wood to transform bitter water or water that was not fit to drink into water that was sweet or fit to drink and if we uh, look at what this incident is really about it is about our lives and the ways in which the lives of people uh, become bitter okay because of uh, sin hurt anger rejection abuse failure disease, heartbreak, you, know, you name it, it could be anything that has caused our lives to become bitter and this is what um, this incident or this revelation is really about that God's solution to the things that have gone wrong in our life that have made our lives bitter uh, is in the piece of wood and we know in fact it's not a piece of wood but two pieces of wood in the shape of a cross and that's what he was revealing to his people through that incident we've been learning in, in the old testament studies about types and the wood here is actually a type of the cross of christ and what uh, god was revealing to his people here is that it is through the cross of christ that it is possible for the bitter things in our life to be transformed to become sweet okay, to become good again so let's just uh, look at the name itself Yahweh Rofe the Lord who the one who heals and this is not the only uh, reference to God's healing there are numerous references to healing even in the Old Testament but we're just going to look at two of them if you can open to Psalm 103 to a very familiar um, verse Psalm 103 verses 2 and 3 Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. So here we see uh, a reference to God as the one who heals diseases. But as I read this verse, what, what struck me was the fact that uh, for me and I'm guessing for most people you know when you're a Christian or you believe in Jesus you take it for granted that you can come to him for healing I mean sorry for forgiveness you can come to him for forgiveness and says he forgives our sins and we know that we can go to him and he forgives our sins but in this verse the forgiveness of sins is put alongside with healing all our diseases and that that is such an integral part of being a Christian that we can go to him for forgiveness of sins we can go to him for healing as well yeah and uh, the second verse that I'd like to look at from the Old Testament is Psalm 147 verse 3 He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Okay. Here again you see a reference to what God does. He does a work of healing. But what's special here is that this healing is now not just about physical healing, but he's talking about the brokenhearted. And the healing that God promises us is not just physical. It is mental, emotional, spiritual, relational. You know, you see verses where he talks about God giving us joy for mourning, okay, uh, praise for despair, uh, for healing from 
wounds that have been caused by words that are spoken, healing for the nation. And so we know that when we talk about uh, God as our healer, it's not just physical healing, but he wants to bring healing. He wants to bring transformation, restoration to uh, all aspects of our life. So this name, uh, like the other Yahweh names, the one that we've learned and the ones that we're gonna learn, these are all names of God that have been revealed in the Old Testament. But we actually see the greatest manifestation of that name in Jesus. And so we just spend a few moments looking at Jesus as Yahweh Rofe. Healing is such a significant part of Jesus, his life and who he was. Um, Let's look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. You don't need to open it to this, but a similar verse, Matthew 9.35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. You know, we just know so many stories in Jesus' life where he healed all kinds of sickness, blindness, raised the dead, you know, set those in the demonic oppression free. So healing was such an integral part of his uh, life and ministry. The second thing that you know we see in Jesus' life was that not only did he heal every sickness and disease, but he also told his disciples to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. And Jesus is uh, commissioning, he's commanding his disciples and he tells them, heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay, so it was so important in his life and it was something that he just expected his disciples to go out and do. But the ultimate manifestation of Yahweh Rofe is in the cross of Christ. Uh, if we look at Isaiah 53, which is the famous uh, passage which prophetically describes the whole account of Jesus' death and crucifixion. Look at Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. That the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Okay. This uh, description of what Jesus did on the cross and that because of that we can avail of healing actually details that Jesus suffered wounds, wounds were inflicted on him and because he um, suffered those wounds, he released healing for us. You know, this similar um, passage is found in 1 Peter 2 verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed so jesus healed jesus told his disciples to heal by his death on the cross we can avail of his healing you also if you just look at what happened in the early church after jesus resurrection and uh, once the spirit is poured out we see his disciples doing the same thing. They go out and they heal people. And you have so many accounts of people being healed by shadow and handkerchiefs and various things. So Jesus' disciples also went about healing the sick. So basically that's uh, the account of Yahweh Rufi. And uh, just to uh, close, just want to highlight two aspects of uh, this name of God, we know that the name of God is about his character. Yahweh Rofe is God our healer and that is in his nature to heal. And the first thing is just going back to the story where we saw that the, the wood transformed the bitter water into, into sweet. 
and that that's what Yahweh Rofe does. He deals with the consequences of sin in our lives, uh, of sin for mankind at large. Okay, in everything that has caused our lives and that of mankind to be um, bitter or wounded or damaged, he brings healing. And the second thought that I just wanted to leave us with is that he is the Lord who heals us not just of physical disease, but of every affliction that that is uh, common or known to the fallen world of diseased bodies, souls, spirits, minds, hearts, relationships. And uh, so what we'd like to do today is, you know, I just close with prayer and then we will look at some time of ministry and prayer for healing. God, we thank you for your word to us this morning. We thank you for this revelation of who you are, God, our healer. And we know, Lord, that each one of us has countless times already experienced your healing hand upon our lives. Today, Lord, we just want to receive this revelation afresh, more fully for ourselves, for our situations, for everything that touches us, Lord. We just want to recognize, acknowledge, believe, trust that you are Yahweh Rufi, God our healer, God who wants to touch and transform any part of our lives that is wounded, hurt, damaged, in any way afflicted. This morning, Lord, for each one here, those who are joining us, we just want to believe, Lord, for your work of healing. And we thank you, Lord, that this is not just a promise for the past or present, but an ongoing promise for our lives. We thank you and we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.